We are so excited about our guest on this show. We met this guy 25, 20 years ago. And he's amazing. He was on our radio show in San Diego, which was the first time we met him. And this was before he really took off. He was mostly doing just radio mm-hmm. shows at that time. Uh, psychic medium, John Edward. And he went on to do a couple of big successful TV shows. I think Crossing Over is probably his best known. And he has something new out now that is really cool. A very cool app that you're going to want to hear about. But mostly it's just fun to catch up with him and talk about his gift and when he learned to do it and all these kind of things. If you are a fan of John Edward, then you are in the right place. He is coming up in just moments. Well, many, many years ago, we had this gentleman on our show, and it's funny, you know, we have hundreds of guests on over the years, and most of them, they come and go, and, yeah. and, you know, and that's it. But for whatever reason, we hit it off, I think with a mutual love of the $6 million man, that's yes. really what did it. <laughs> uh, but we're so excited, John, to have you back on the show. Thanks for being here, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. And I view you as a friend, but I also find it comical that for over 20 years now, I've tried to prove you wrong and you have shocked me and dazzled me every time we've talked and i've been like wow that's amazing well i think what's cool is the fact that you actually hold on to a healthy sense of skepticism which is i want everybody when i'm lecturing around the country around the world you know i'm always telling people we are at a time on this planet in our collective states and countries that we need to be critical thinkers we need to be skeptical we need to question everything and just because somebody has a title, a position, is an author, a songwriter, I don't really care what the job is. I think we have to listen to not only what they're saying, but what's their intention? Where are they coming from? And does this align with who I am, right? So mm-hmm. there are people who have my ability, who are very good at what they do, but I wouldn't want to hang out with them because yeah. I, don't like their, I don't like their intention. I don't yeah. like their ethics or their approach to the subject matter. So I think that when you look at any field, whether it's a person behind a pulpit, a person in a classroom, a person who's a politician, a person who's a doctor, a person who's a psychic. You have to look at like, where are they coming from? And what they're saying, does it align with me? So when I see people in my field saying stuff like, follow me, I have the answers. Mm. I'm like, yeah, no, (laughs) I have some insights. (laughs) I've been doing this for 38 years. Here's what I've learned. But I have like my own stuff that I got to do. You know, like, look how long it took me to get on here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> uh, before we obviously we want to talk about what's happening now and you've you got this new app that's really really cool but I don't know if I don't know if, if we've talked about this since maybe the first time we spoke to you and since we're doing this in kind of a new way and we're on camera with right. you if you don't mind sure let's let's go back just a little bit when did you realize you had this gift so I was 15 when I went for a reading with a woman named Lydia Clark who was doing readings at my grandmother's house. And the abridged version of the story is, my dad was a New York City police officer, a career army guy, hated this subject matter. My mom, my grandmother, my uncle, my aunts, my mom's side of the family, they loved this subject matter. So the general rule was, keep my son away from that, whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. And my mom did. Like, you know, whenever they had like psychic stuff happen, whether it be astrologers or card readers or seances, I was never allowed to be around it. Well, that was up until my mom and dad split. And when I was like 12 and a half, 13, we moved into my grandmother's house. I jokingly called that the paranormal hub of activity. And um, I would just hear, don't tell your father that we're doing this, which was fine because I really didn't talk to him. But I had adopted his, this is not real. Only women do this. Like, that's not a guy's thing. Like, I was all of the, all of the, the stereotypical things you would think about it in a negative way. Even though I don't want to admit it, I did. I had it. I kind of yeah. like it, it infiltrated my brain. Yeah. Well, well and, and then, then a, a parent has that power over us. So I mean, sure, I even if you even if you don't have that connection to the parent, I still mm-hmm. it was I guess what I patterned my role modeled myself off of. But um, long story short, I went for a reading to debunk her because she was doing readings for people in the house, and they were coming, they they were coming from upstairs downstairs, and they had this like glazed over look, and I was like, this was different from some of the other ones. Like some of the other ones I would be able to pull apart the readings. I couldn't do it with hers. And I'm like, why can't I like why can't I pull this apart? You know? Um, it was too specific. So anyway, my cousin went and she said, You should go. And I wound up going. And I was like, I'll go, but I'm not gonna help her. And <laughs> she literally, and I can demonstrate for you because we're sitting here, um, she took my high school ring and she put it to her forehead and she started to speak. So she's not looking at me. And she just like went off and said that the reason why she was there that day was because she needed to come and meet me and put me on my path. 
that I had beings of like white and gold light ready to work with me and that I was going to change the way millions of people looked at her field. I was 15. I was like sitting there, like, I think at the moment my aspiration was I wanted to open a deli. Like, I think that was what I was thinking, you know, and this woman who I had never met, who was amazing, um, started like, like, you're going to change millions of people's of lives at 15. They're telling you this. And for us, it was like, maybe we can get y'all into a vocational school. (laughs) And I, I just was like sitting there like, and here's the thing. She forced me to take her seriously because I got like this moment of like, you know, you're a kid. I was 15. I was going to like laugh. It's like, like, you know, you're not supposed to laugh in church. Like I had that moment of like, I'm going to, I'm going to laugh in this lady's face, <laughs> but I didn't because she was so commanding. And then I thought like, oh, she's crazy. Like, <laughs> like she really legitimately believes this. Like she's crazy. So I just was like, all right, I'll just have this moment. I have a great story now. I'm going to go downstairs and tell them like, yeah, she's like wacky. And um, that was part one of the reading. Part two of the reading she had this moment of giving information that was specific, but yet it felt general. So I had that moment of going like, oh, uh, you know, like I was able to go like, yeah. wait a second. And I, so now I had like two strikes against her. And then the last part, the last part I really couldn't explain because she gave me information that there's no way possible she could have known. She literally would have had to have been with me or the people I was with and nobody in the house could have possibly told her any of what she told me. And I just was like, and then she told me the outcomes of those circumstances and they all happened. So that was a pretty mind blowing thing. And I tell folks that it wasn't like I went, oh my God, I'm psychic. It's not what happened. What happened is I went, oh my God, I feel violated. Like this woman, she's got something. I don't know what she's got, but I don't like what she got. And I don't like how she used what she had and walked through my life, my brain. And she like knew stuff and that she knew my mother. I just did not like it. It made me really uncomfortable. So. I just did what I would normally do. And I was the kid that asked a ton of questions. So I went to the public library and back then in 1985, it was under the occult section and I was embarrassed to check the books out because of the word. I didn't know what yeah. it meant, but it sounded dark and you know, yeah. not good. So yeah. I just went and read every book I had that I could get my hands on. And here's what I learned. I learned that I was psychic. I learned that all these books that were written way before I was even a concept, um, published way before I was even a concept, was talking about intuition and psychic ability and all of these things that I'm like, this is not psychic. Like, this is common sense. Like, we all have this. And then I remember saying to like friends in high school, like, you know, you've had this happen, right? And they'd go, no. And I'd be like, <laughs> never? And they'd go, no, never. I'm like, really? And they're like, why do you? And I'm like, yeah, since I'm a kid. Yeah, all the time. So like the concept of astral projection or out-of-body experiences and flying and things that a lot of the listeners are going to be like, yeah, I've had that too. Well, guess what? Newsflash, you too. Um, have a touch of the psychic, you know, a touch of the intuition, a touch of being what now people are calling HSP, which is a highly sensitive person. Oh, okay. Okay. It, it, it's fascinating to me. You know, I, my, my mom or my grandmother, but my, who, but she raised me. I thought she was my mom her whole life. She had those things. She would have dreams and then she would see these things and they would happen. Or she like, my dad lost a wallet and she fell asleep and dreamed where it was. And that's where it was. Right. I mean, so I've, I've certainly been around it and I've always, I've, I've always believed in, in that, in that ability. Uh, but you know, I think looking back to the first time we had you on our show and, and I think that was via phone probably. I that's what, yes. And I'm, I'm going to jump in here because this is where I was going to prove you wrong. <laughs> I was going to get you. Chris was you at 15. That's and, level of- and I'll never forget, we took a random caller. So we know it wasn't a setup. Uh, it wasn't, you know, anything like that. And the lady told us she wanted to find like her cousin or something. And you kept talking to her about her cousin, but you kept saying, I'm sorry, there's somebody in a uniform at top of the stairs that keeps yelling down. And she's like, no, I want to talk to my cousin. And you're, finally, you just stopped her and said, is your dad a cop? And she said, Yes. And you said, has he passed over? And she said, yes. And he goes, that's who's talking to me. He's in uniform. And that came out of nowhere. And we were like, whoa. And then you said, he keeps asking about you saying you should have got rid of the Titanic. It makes no sense, but he keeps saying, get rid of the Titanic. And she started crying. And she said that they had lamps that were handed down from her grandparents down all the way down to her that are in the living room that are so ugly. Everybody says those lamps should have sunk on the Titanic. And I was oh, like, wow. 
Oh, okay. And I went over that tape of that interview a dozen times trying to figure out. <laughs> it was like, I was felt like it was in a where Columbo did, where, episode. Where, He's got yarn where, yeah, going this. Where did, he, where did he figure this out? And then I finally realized, I was like, this guy's for real. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think what I appreciated about you right away was that you didn't come in, as you've talked about, you know, as one of those, I'm just, I can, t- I'm going to tell you I, everything you, you were like, I may not connect with who you want to connect with. I may not be able to tell you what you think. I, and I loved how you recommended they write down everything you say so yep. that later. And I think, uh, so I immediately respected you at that point, and then we just ended up liking you. Yeah, and uh, you know the rest is history. But that's a fascinating story. I, I, I wonder about people like you and, and people who have that ability when they realize it, how they realize it. Because I think for the general public, we see a lot of movies, and it's played right. very differently than how it really right. is. Yeah. Have you ever had someone reach out to you from the other side that like scared you? Like, I mean, something that you're like, oh, I don't want to hear this person's message, or has it always been a message of someone? Being kind. No, or- I think as a kid, I was a little bit freaked out by some stuff, you know, pre knowing what this was, you know, like I would be told, oh, you have such a vivid imagination. And there were some very, very real experiences I had as a kid that were, um, I think detrimental, to be honest. Like I remember being um, not able to sleep at night. And the reason why I couldn't sleep at night is in the corner of my, literally in the corner of my room, I would see a wolf, but not like regular sized, like three times the size of a wolf. Oh, wow. And as, as a kid, that's the villain in all the stories, you know, the sure. big bad wolf. So, and I would literally ask my mom to, you know, get my dad who had an alcohol problem. So I, that's why I would go to her. I'd be like, get daddy to come in with his gun. There's a wolf in my room. And then she would tell me like, you know, you're not, I think they thought I wanted to sleep in their room. Like I didn't want to stay in my bed yeah. as a kid, mm-hmm. which I really never did. Um, I wanted to be sometimes as far away from the two of them as possible because of their energy. But like the, the reality was I was afraid and it would make me feel um, unsafe. So seeing a wolf was not something that I felt um, su- supported by. Nobody in my family believed me. Like my mom and dad definitely believed me. And my mom would say, go back to bed. There's no wolves in Queens. You know, like you live in the city. There's no wolves in the city. And we're on the second floor of an apartment. Like, well, do you see wolves during the day? Why would there be a wolf in your room? Like there was nothing, there was no validation to the kid, you know? Sure. Yes. And then for any parent out there, if you have a child that is telling you that they're afraid to sleep, right? Here's the issue. You need to get into the kid's head, right? So I am that kid still, because I can still remember this. Most kids are sleeping in a single bed. They're in like a, a little single bed. And what, what happens in a single bed? You have three lines of defense that you have to now be aware of. You can be gotten by three, you know, three imaginary whatever is coming from both sides, plus yeah. underneath the bed. So I always tell parents, like, if you, have a, if you have a child that's autistic, if you have a child that's very sensitive, give them like a blue light bulb to sleep with. Find like something, one CD or one song or one whatever that you, they can listen to that's their go to bed, whatever, because it, it takes away the darkness. It fills up the sound. And then you take their mattress and you put it in the corner of the room so that they have like wall on wall behind them. And they just have to, they could logically know nothing's underneath it. Like you have, you have to kind of like work with the child, not just go, oh, they, it, it, just go to bed. Because yeah. just go to like bed. That. Yeah, just go to bed doesn't work when you're having a real experience. So I think I was about, I don't know, 1998 when my first book came out and I was doing a book signing. So I was definitely in my late 20s. And I was, I think in like New Mexico or Utah, I was out in the Midwest, like the Southwest. Mm -hmm. And I went to do a book signing and there was a shaman that came and he was standing in front of me and he kept looking next to me and smiling. And then he would look next to me and then smile. And then finally I was like, what? (laughs) And he kind of like, yeah, yeah, like what? And um, I mean, I, I encounter some weird people in my journey. Right. <laughs> no. So yeah, just, just a wee bit. So he like looks past me and he smiles and like kind of nods and says, you walk with the wolf in this life. And I legitimately was like, what? <laughs> like, oh what did you say? And he's like, your, your spirit animal is a wolf. Do you not know that? And I swear there was like a, like an eight year old kid inside me who like wanted to like jump up and be like, I told you all, I told you, I was not crazy. But yeah, so like that wolf plagued the crap out of me when I was a kid. So that was scary. That scared me. I can't say readings scare me because yeah. readings I'm in control of, right? It's not okay. controlling me. So that I couldn't understand. Okay. Man, what a story. And to, to, to all those years later to, to hear that, and to have to wait that long to hear that. Yeah. 
And like nobody, you know, I, I used to work psychic fairs, you know, and I, I was in a room full of like 40 other psychics. Nobody ever turned around and be like, you have a connection to a wolf, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. it was like this like strange shaman that like, you know, walked up. And what's really cool is I walked across a very long field to get to where I was going. So I could have driven, but I was like, yeah, that looks like I, that's close enough for me to walk. And as I was walking, it wasn't as I was like walking <laughs> to get to it. There was a moment where I turned around to contemplate going back to my rental car. And when I turned around, there was like a wolf in the distance. And I'm, I assumed it was like a coyote, you know? Mm-hmm. So it kind of like made me flash back before I even got to do the event and the signing. So I was like, wow, all of that kind of like just connected. It was kind of cool. It was really cool. That's something else, man. Uh, very cool. I, I got a lot more than I bargained for out of that question. Thank you. Are you able to control your, like you said, you're in control of your readings. Like if you're talking to us right now, do you have messages coming in from other yeah. areas or are you able to focus? Yeah, no, no. I kind of find that it's, um again, you know, you talk about TV and movies, right? Well, mm-hmm. reality shows now have kind of taken the subject matter and just stretched it so thin that it's like, it's really uncomfortable. To the point that, you know, you have younger people in the field that are starting out seeing certain things like ambush readings Mm. and attack readings and thinking that's okay. It's not. Mm. It's never okay to enter someone's vibration without their consent and their permission. So I always at my events when they ask me that question, say, I want you to imagine that I am a breast surgeon. And they all kind of go like that. And I go, and I'm walking through the cereal aisle of the supermarket. And I happened to notice that, you know, somebody's wearing a low cut, you know, top. And I noticed that they have a protruding lump. And I think that that might be something. Would it be okay for me to run up to somebody in the cereal aisle and go, hey, listen, I'm just going to feel your boob for a moment. I'm going to pal, <laughs> I'm going to palpate this lump that I'm seeing. And I'm, it's okay. Cause I'm, I'm a doctor. I'm a breast surgeon and I'm just going to just like, you know, I'm going to feel that. And I watch everybody's reaction go. <laughs> Wait, did he just say that? Yeah. Um, you know, well, it's like I, I can tell you from my single days that that does not work. <laughs> <laughs> they do not like that. Not and, I, and I'll say to people, I go, is that okay? And they go, no. And I go, why? It's a doctor. Nobody cares that it's a doctor. Yeah. They yeah. care that they've been violated. Well, everybody should care that they've been violated if somebody walks up and tries to give them a reading. Because if okay. you're not asking for it, it's not appropriate for somebody to deliver content. But what happens in my world is people think like, oh my God, the power of love was just so strong that they had to push through and make that happen. Mm. No, the psychic had to open themselves up to allow that to happen, right? Because if you don't, if I don't allow it to happen, it's not going to happen no matter how, how much somebody wants it to happen. I had somebody gotcha. walk through a, walk through a, uh, I used to look, when crossing over was on the air, yeah, I would do my, I would do my grocery shopping like two o'clock in the morning because I like to grocery shop and pick my own stuff, right? I didn't, yeah. and my wife was like, yeah, you go. So I was like literally in like path market two o'clock in the morning and I got recognized and there was a woman that was following me all around the store. We like crossed about six times. And then finally, when I got outside, her daughter was with her and she like ran to the car mortified. And the woman said, I'm so sorry. She's like, I, I, I just want to say, I really appreciate what you do. One of your books really, really helped me with the passing. And, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but I was like, I, I, I passed you once or twice, seven times, like in the, sh- in the like in the supermarket. <laughs> just in case somebody wanted to give me a message. And I left and I said, no, I said, I'm kind of shut down when I'm in public. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. And, and to think that you would just be walking around yeah. with, you know, millions, that's what millions I was wondering. of you know, things that I, it's, that would, it's hard to even fathom. Uh, well, let, let's talk about the, the, the app. I've, we've been seeing on your sure. Instagram and we, we see have a the evolve happening here. So tell us about this. How does it work? What is it? How do people get involved? The whole, the whole scoop. So from just the beginning, I did this work since I'm 15. Then I wound up doing lots of radio time. So I met you guys, wrote books, did a couple of international TV shows, left television to do the online kind of want to pursue it. What I did on, on TV, I wanted to do for like digital. And I did it in like 2009. So you know what wasn't happening in 2009? Digital. Digital was not happening in 2009. Definitely. So I, I, the problem about being psychic and being somewhat of a visionary is the timing Completely could be right. off. So I was completely off. So not in concept, just in timing. So yeah. what I did back then failed, learned really the hard way, like um, concept, good, timing, off, never let it go. And that's what I'm now doing now. I'm re kind of going back and it's called evolveplus.tv. So if people go to evolveplus.tv, um, it is my answer to social media. I really don't like social media. I don't like, you know, like... I prefer talking to people that I know, like you guys like free direct message rather than yeah. going on and communicating with people. It's just, 
I just don't like it. So, you know, Facebook, I refer to, I refer to as bitch book. Instagram, <laughs> I got more, more scam accounts trying to copy me, direct like messaging that. people, saying to folks like, you know, hello, sweet spirit. I have a message for you. Please contact oh, me. Oh, God. So like, we, we get that, I think, because we're friends with you on Instagram. So I get that right. in my DMs. I have all kinds of people following. It's like, just leave me alone. So there's a lot of that that's going on. So I don't like that. And then like, you know, Twitter, they just, lost, everybody just lost their blue verification. So now I have no protection for people there. Yeah. So this is my, my way of giving people their own social media community. So everybody that goes on Evolve Plus creates their own profile, but then there's a premium side to it where it unlocks content where I'm doing different channels. And the first gotcha. channel is the Evolve with John Edward channel. And I'm in the process of getting the rights to my books back. I'm getting the rights to like videos, pro everything that I've done. I'm kind of bringing them all home to one-stop shopping where people can be there. And it's, they can just then go to the app store. They can download it. The, uh, for people that can see it, look for the cookie. It's a cookie with the Saturn ring around it. Love it. Okay. Love it. What a great idea. And I think this, I, I, I can't imagine it not being huge. You have such a following anyway. And now a chance for everyone to come together in one place like this is brilliant. Well, it's kind of cool because people have been like, thank you for creating a safe space. And my intention wasn't to create a safe space. My intention was to create a space where people can communicate. And I just, you know, safe wasn't even in the concept. It was like, where can I, where can I teach? Where can I demonstrate? Where can I do this? Right? Like you guys are doing it. Where can I do live events? Like I did a live event last night um, and they had people in the comments and I, I just wanted to create my own kind of energy. And it's really, really cool. We launched a week ago and have like 5,000 people in it. That's so, fantastic, man. Yeah. And then we have, we are doing, I have astrologers coming on and it's the place where people can learn the stuff that like I do every day. Like we also in the beginning of this, I don't know when this is going to air, but like in the beginning of this, I had a problem with like my internet and my, my nothing was connecting. And if this is airing between, you know, or before May 14th, just know that we're in a Mercury retrograde. So Mercury is the planet of communication contracts, travel, negotiation. And it's a time for renewal. It's a time for, you know, redoing. So I'm not an astrologer, but I study it, right? So now I'm like, wait, all these astrologers that I follow, hey, would you guys want to come on the app? They said yes. So I verified them. And now anybody that's on the app, when they see the green verified check mark, they know, oh no, this guy's, this, this person's good. Like, so I'm taking the people that I would follow on social media, inviting them on and creating different channels. So we're get, my next big thing is I want to launch a whole thing for grief. Because people don't, mm. people don't know where to get information about grief. And I know that sounds crazy, but they come to me and I'm like, listen, I could help you understand the concept, but I'm not a therapist. You know, I can only kind of like validate stuff for you. You really need to go work on this. So I'm going to create a whole channel just for grief. Oh, wow. It makes total sense. I mean, it's, it's a companion to what people are getting from you anyway. I mean, these are people who have gone to the other side. So why not give them that opportunity to deal with what they're dealing with on this side? Right. Look at you. You're a pretty smart fella. <laughs> and I, I just listen. Be, and I want to be clear that you know that you can always feel free. You don't have to wait for our permission. If someone, if Burt Reynolds or Eddie Van Halen's wanting to get a message over to us, <laughs> we are we are here. I love that out of all the people, there's the two you chose. Yes. Not my mom or my well, dad. Well, because I want to know was there a script for Smokey and the Bandit 4 that we never saw? I've never quite gotten that information from anybody. <laughs> yeah, just, just keep your mind open to it. Uh, now, Chris, did you have I, I'll be listening. Did you have yes. at least one six million? Yes, million? we have one. Ultimate uh -oh. six million dollar man question. Okay. Can you name all three actors to portray Dr. Rudy Wells? All three? Yes. I could see the last guy, but I don't know the first two. Martin E. Brooks? Yes, yeah, the yeah, I remember him with the mustache. Yes. Martin Martin Balsam was the first one in the movie. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. And then uh, Oppenheimer was the guy. Let me look up his first name. I think it was John. Uh, no, Alan Oppenheimer was the second guy. Wow. So. I know I know that they, no, that's a whole different show. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Are we moving into the fall guy? Are we moving past <laughs> $6 million dollar I, man? Or? No, I somehow made a link between, um, I don't know how I made it, but I went to the I Dream of Genie 15 years later reunion <laughs> yeah. uh, show. Yeah. I was like, oh, they did a swap out there with, with Wayne uh, Rogers. Yeah. Wayne Rogers played Larry, Larry Hagman. I was like, wait, how did I get to Wayne Rogers from $6 million? Man, like, there's not even a connection there. I mean, ultimately that whole, the whole world of seventies and early eighties TV is very incestuous. I, I love your inflection of that was like, this is just so ridiculous that I would, 
mix up I Dream a Genie with Six Million Dollar Man during this serious interview. <laughs> Why do I keep talking to these guys? This is just nonsense. <laughs> Nobody's thinking of I Dream a Genie right now. Uh, so well, you it, see, I got my genie bottle right there. Oh, oh. check you out. Like Fancy that is a that's like an authentic genie bottle. Get out like, of here. Yeah, where, where'd it's you like get the it? only. Um, the actual artist that, that does it. If you go to geniebottles.com, you too can get any genie bottle from any series, any of the seasons. And they're, they're pretty, they are great gifts. Like that is cool. when I tell you, I have given so many of these as gifts to people and they go, this is the best present because it is so nostalgic. <laughs> I and love it. It's a really, yeah, it's a really cool geniebottles.com. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and then if, if folks want to see where you're going to be, because we know you're on the road, you're doing, you do the 10 person Zooms, you do all that kind of stuff. We got to get our wives on one of those Zooms. Man, yeah, just... it's at johnedward.net. No S on Edward. So johnedward.net. Um, and then under the Evolve Plus TV app, mm -hmm. there's a section for events as well. Perfect. Okay. Fantastic. John. Very cool. Man, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much. We know this has been us hounding you for a while to get you on here, but we just, we're, we're such fans and we love that you take the time to talk to us and do this stuff. What you're doing, I think, is very important for a lot of people. I so, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's our pleasure. Great talking to you again. And we'll get Thank this you, out. Always. And, uh, hopefully, uh, I can't wait to see how, how Evolve Plus takes off. I think it's going to be huge. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.